Hi, uh, with all the good weather, and uh, more and more families are camping this summer. And uh, this video is designed or is about trying to help those people who are starting off uh, with camping, and particularly in relation to sleeping mats. So, what to sleep on when you're camping. Um, so, why do you need a sleeping mat or sleeping pad? There's two reasons. One, for comfort, because you don't want to be sleeping on top of rocks and stuff. And two, to provide insulation to protect you from the uh, cold ground uh, coming up and ruin your night's sleep. Um, I, as the video progresses, I'm going to talk about R values. And this is the most uh, common way of measuring uh, a sleeping pad's insulation. It can range, I've seen ranges from 0.5 up to 10 or 11. Uh, however, anything over, anything from uh, 2 onwards is perfectly fine for uh, camping uh, or down to freezing. If, you're, if it goes below freezing, it gets to minus 10 or 11 or something like that, you're looking for our values of 3 or 4, 5 or 6, etc. But most of the time, what we'll be doing is, uh, it'll be, hopefully it won't be going on past freezing. So, the different type of mats that we have. Um, there's about five or six different common mats, and this, I'm going to start off sorry, with the uh, yoga mat, and uh, our closed cell foam mat. The advantage of this type of mat is that it's very, very cheap. It can be gotten in lots of different places, and it's very light. So it's easy to carry around. The disadvantages are, quite obviously, it's very, very thin. So it's not very comfortable, especially for a side sleeper, and it provides almost no insulation. And I wouldn't recommend this in any way, I wouldn't recommend this at all. The next mat we have is uh, a more traditional uh, sleeping pad. And it's like the yoga mat, except that it has foil back and foil insulation. And again, the advantages of this are it's very lightweight, it's very cheap actually. I've seen um, ones of these in sale and done for five euros and it provides insulation. Um, it's going to be rated down to about, uh, about two, so it'll be fine for most of the things we're going to be doing in Ireland. The disadvantages are like the previous one, it's very, very thin, so it's not great, not comfortable, not very comfortable for uh, sleeping on. But I would have no, uh, I would really recommend this one for kids uh, uh, camping during the summer, there will be no problems, lots of kids uh, for years have slept on, on something similar to this. So the next one, the next type of pad we have is the air bed, or the air, air mattress. Um, the uh, thing with this type of one is that it is very, very comfortable. It uh, comes usually in a box like this. Uh, it's easy to set up, you unroll it and you inflate it. Now, you usually need to have something like this kind of a blower to inflate it. Um, and it does the job. As I said it's very, very comfortable. The problems with it are that there is almost no insulation in it. Uh, and it usually has a rating of 1, so it's not, not suitable really at all for any kind of cold temperatures. Um, it, I've nearly I've seen everyone that I've seen on a camping setup has uh, burst it or deflated in some shape or form or uh, through use. Um, uh, Abby, what do you think about it? Um, if you fall off it during the night, you'll get a really big bang on you, and that can actually be really hard, and you might not be able to get back to sleep. <laughs> That's true too. Um, be careful with this type of pad uh, in your tent to make sure that you have enough room. Which for, for when you're actually in a sleeping bag on top of it, you pop down there and go down the feet down to the end there. Yeah. So if you're in your sleeping bag, you're on it. But if you're in your sleeping bag, sleep bag in the pad. That you'll be careful that because you're just higher up, that you're not actually hitting the roof of the tent. Because if your sleeping bag hits the roof of the tent, it's going to get damp and your feet are going to get wet during the night, and no one wants to wake up with a cold, wet feet. We are going to talk about kind of uh, what backpackers and uh, kind of long term uh, uh, people that have done lots and lots of camping have done down through the years. Use. Uh, we're talking about inflating and self inflating uh, sleeping pads. There are uh, the main companies that make these 
our Tamarest, a Seat to Summit, Exped, uh, they make usually the higher end ones, so you're going to pay between 60 and maybe 250 euros, depending on the weight of it, how, how, how light it is, and depending on the, the, the installation or the R value. There are other companies that make more uh, cost effective or budget friendly, more family friendly, um, budget wise ones like Van Gogh, Outwell, OEX, which is this brand, and High Gear. High Gear is another one. Um, Turmeret, which is kind of the, the, uh, the world leader in it, or at least the most common brand in it, the most well known brand, is actually an American company that uh, manufactures all of its sleeping pads in Linton in County Cork. And if anyone has, I'd love to know if they have a factory outside shop. I've never been able to find out, and if they do, please post below. <laughs> You're posing. So, this is um, the self, self inflating pad. Very, very easy to do. This is actually my daughter's one. Uh, it, but it is a full size, it is an adult sleeping pad. Um, very well for children. Yeah, it's very easy setup, isn't it? Yeah. It comes in a little stuff sack like this. It's very easy to come out. All you need to do is twist the little um, uh, valve. And it sucks the air around you. So if you give it 10 or more minutes, then you can just do a few blows yourself, get it as, as sturdy as you want it to be. So. It'll be very comfortable when you go to bed. It won't be too light and it'll be very comfortable and it'll clear the end of the night. True. So, what I've been getting at is that, so yeah, you know, do the valve, it'll, it'll actually self inflate, leave it for 10 minutes, then you a couple of little breaths in afterwards to get to how firm you want it. Um, the advantages of it are that it's got a great R value, usually they have very good R values. This one has an R value of 4, way more than the uh, that she's going to come across in Ireland, at least at her age. Um, and it is very comfortable. It is comfortable if you are someone that sleeps on their back. If you're a side sleeper, like me, sure. Um, at times, not the best. Uh, so the next one we have is my own one. Oh yeah, you help a lot. Right. So the next one is a manually inflating sleeping pad. So you know it comes in a little. Stuff like this, so very, very compact. You roll it out and you blow in it a couple of minutes and it fills up. This is a Turmerest Neo Air All Season. Um, I got this about five, six years ago and I paid just under 100 euros for it, so it can be quite expensive, uh, but really, really comfortable. Really good R value, R value 4.9, so more than what I want to. Uh, need in my stage anyway, like I'm camping up the mountains. Um, um, yeah. Another fault about it, if you're sleeping and you roll over, maybe some of the noise that it makes might actually disturb you, but my daddy here thinks they're soothing. I do, yeah. I, I actually like it. Yeah, some people give up with the kind of crinkly sound. Um, I really like it. You know, popping it up. Um, so that is one of the disadvantages, is that it is more prone more likely to deflate and burst than say a foam mat, a uh, foam pad or even the self inflating ones but way less likely than the air beds. Um, it's never happened to me but I certainly have seen it happen for other people that they can uh, deflate. But they're easy fix, they come in little patches and they're easy fixed, there's no problems with them. Um, yeah, the, the, the airway advantage is really lightweight, good R values and uh, really really comfortable. The, there's no real downside apart from cost. The last and one, best. Oh, last and best, absolutely. Last and best is what's called a car camping mattress. Um, this is uh, actually my wife's one. It's a Turmerest Neo Air Dream. That it, it is, let uh, me see. Um, um, my mommy actually quite enjoy it. I um, guess her a good night's sleep, and if she has a good night's sleep, everyone have a great day. That was my thinking, absolutely. That costs a lot of money. That's one of the big, that is the disadvantage, is that this costs 
uh, 180 euros and my wife didn't know about that until very very recently when we started talking about making this video but as Abby pointed out Mammy gets a good night's sleep everyone have a great day absolutely thing, like it only if you might have to go to work for an extra few days except if Mammy gets a good night's sleep you'll get an extra few days of happiness absolutely another disadvantage is that it comes in a uh, uh, stuff sack like this so it's actually and quite big and a huge have... difference between this and this if you take it this is a glass another great thing about this sack if you're feeling lonely <laughs> in your tent it's the best hugger it is actually the best hugger <laughs> um, so what is it, it what's it made of? it's actually a three layer system there's an air pad uh, like my own one and there is a foam mattress in it there uh, lining as well and then it's covered in this kind of soft fleecy material it is easily the most comfortable thing mattress that I've slept on outside of an actual bed. Um, it's very easy set up. You unroll it, you blow it up a little bit, and it's done. Bring easy pack away, but you won't bring this camp, you won't bring this backpacking, it's just too big. Where you can throw this in the, the rucksack with you. That this is really for car camping, for where you're going to drive to a uh, campsite and move your gear or equipment from the Roots of the car to the tent. So, um, what I didn't talk about, right, Abby, thanks. What I didn't talk about, it's okay, it's uh, What I didn't talk about was uh, cots or uh, camp beds or fold out beds. Um, for two reasons. One, I don't have any. And secondly, I've never actually slept in one myself. However, I've seen lots of them with other people camping with us um, and can be very, very comfortable, but also. Like the air mattress uh, or the air bed, it provides no insulation. So usually people have some sort of um, uh, some sort of other pad or insulation with them as well. Uh, they can also be a bit fiddly setting up, but um, that your mileage may vary in that. Uh, they can vi widely vary in price. If you do have an air bed and you're worried about it getting cold, what I've seen lots of times is that people go off and buy one of these uh, cheap um, insulated camping mats and they put it underneath. So that gives you the kind of insulation that you require and you have the comfort of the, of the, of the bed. Um, and especially when with families, it's all about trying to keep the costs down and especially if you're only going camping a couple times a year, something like that would work a treat. Uh, I, I want to put links to places where you can get all this kind of stuff uh, all the gear I've kind of talked about uh, on the, in the links below and I'll, say, I'll add another link for Outdoor Gear Lab it's a, it's a review site that goes into really in-depth uh, discussions about all kind of camping and backpacking stuff and it gives you more information about our values and all that kind of stuff so that's the end of this video all going well hope to do, we hope to do another one on sleeping bags and all that other uh, camping stuff and thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to, put, to give this video a thumbs up.